Have you heard the Face on Mars story? This is probably one of my favorite stories claimed by Zachariah Sitchin in his work, the Earth Chronicle series. Now, I have to admit that NASA has denied there's any kind of giant face monument on Mars, so for now, this is just a story. Even though this story inspired a movie about a face on Mars with alien contact called Mission to Mars, made in 2000, which got really lousy reviews. This story is about how a technologically advanced race of humanoid beings called the Anunnaki came to this Earth and began mining this Earth for its riches and resources. NASA has also claimed they know nothing regarding a planet that Mr. Sitchin says these people came from, Nibiru. I've done two videos on that subject regarding the origin of Nibiru and where that story comes from, the Enuma Elish. Perhaps you'd be inclined to check it out, if you haven't already. Regardless, the Face on Mars story is remarkable, so here we go. Around 300,000 years ago, an exiled king fell to earth from heaven. He came fleeing. It was some sort of dispute over bloodlines. His name was Alalu. According to the Sumerian king's list, which most of us ancient astronaut theorists agree upon, he was a loris, who ruled heaven for a total of 45 shar. Now a shar is a measurement of 3,600 years, so that's 162,000 years he ruled in heaven. The throne was then given to Anu, who previously was Alalu's cupbearer. That means Anu had to drink from Alalu's cup to make sure it was not poisoned. So when Alalu arrived on this earth, his first encounter was with that of a serpent. Friend or foe, he asked of it, but with no response from the serpent, Alalu killed that snake. But because he had done so, he declared the serpent to be holy. Such was the reverence of this exiled king. Alalu searched the land and found many riches, especially gold. So with his ship, he called his homeworld and told the new king that he had discovered these things, that they should come to earth to help him mine the stuff. Anu, of course, was weary of the ousted king. Now, Anu had two other sons and a daughter. His firstborn son is Ea. Eventually, he came to be called Enki, which means Lord Earth. His second son was named Enlil. Ea and Enlil had different mothers, and since Anu was married to Enlil's mother, he was the heir to the throne and not the elder son, Ea. Ea had already married Alalu's daughter. Her name was Damkina. Ea, along with 50 heroes, decided he would go to investigate Alalu's claims of riches on the planet they called Ki, this Earth. He was piloted by Anzu, who was Alalu's nephew, and they flew down to the Earth. It is said Ea landed in the constellation Age of Ram and set up shop in a place called the Iridug, and it is argued that he is the second name in the Sumerian king's list, Alulim who was the first king of the earth, once kingship had descended from heaven. The list says Alulim ruled the Eridug for eight shars, a total of 28,800 years. Now, if you never read any of the Sumerian texts, you might be saying, there is no way someone could live that long, but that's why they were called gods. What's interesting about Ea landing in the age of Ram is that in this name, Alulim, it has the root word Alu, which according to this Pennsylvania Sumerian dictionary means Ram. It's also interesting that the Egyptian counterpart to Ea, Kanum, wears the head of a ram. Are these things a coincidence? Ea and Kanum are considered counterparts because both of them have the same role in creating the first human. I'll tell that tale someday, but let's go back to this story. They mined a lot of golden riches, which pleased Anu. So finally, Anu arrived on earth to see for himself. There, he cast lots between himself and his two sons by drawing straws. One would rule the space above the earth and be in charge of the mining operation. The other would rule the earth and its oceans. And the third would rule from Nibiru as the king. Enlil ended up with a mining operation, and so it is argued that he is the second name in the Sumerian king's list, Al-Aljar, who ruled a total of 10 shars, which is 36,000 years. Thus Ea became Enki, as he was now master of this earth. Perhaps he was content with this, as he knew he would never get the throne, since his younger brother was the rightful heir by way of marriage. Thus, Anu stayed as king of heaven, which perhaps he intended all along. But the ousted king was not content by this, for he was given nothing. So he called upon Anu for a wrestling match right then and there to finally determine who would be king. They removed their clothes and wrestled naked there on the beach. Quickly, Anu subdued Alalu and threw him down. Then he placed his foot upon the old king's chest and declared himself the victor. Alalu was furious, so he bent up and bit off Anu's genitals. Foul play, they all cried, all the men who watched. 
For this crime, Alalu was forced into exile, away from Nibiru and away from the Earth. As the story goes, he was sent to Mars to die. Now his nephew Anzu, the one who piloted Aya to Earth, decided that he would go with Alalu to Mars, the Red Planet. And there Alalu died. But because he was once a king of heaven, Anzu believed that he should never be forgotten. So a shrine was built with his face staring out towards the heavens, the face on Mars. It is even said a sentinel was placed there for all time, some kind of guardian robot. Told you, this story is crazy, but I do love it. And so we say his name, so that he is not forgotten, for he was once a king of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia in the highest, the God Alalu. You see, Yah means God, and in the highest is referring to the red star that we see in the night sky, the planet Mars. Yep, that's why we say alleluia. It's not just a random holy word. Just to be clear, Zachariah Sitchin never made that last claim. I did. Now, I've put together a book retelling all these ancient stories called In the Days Before the Flood. It's self-published, and it's available on blurb.com. I'll leave the link in the description below if you're, if you're interested in this kind of thing. Perhaps you'd like to hear what happened to Anzu, who decided he would avenge his uncle. But I'll save that story for another day. Thank you for your time.